So in the last couple of weeks, you may have been exposed to the internet contagion. That was the Hover Tech hoax, a phony commercial in which Tony Hawk appeared to be hawking a Back to the Future style hoverboard. If you fell for it, I mean, I guess that's what hoaxes are for, but you probably need to hone your BS detector a little better. And if you manage to miss it, I'm sure that you want a hoverboard as much as anyone else. Unfortunately, it's my job to break it to you. Anti-gravity technology is not the thing. If you spend any amount of time on or near an object that has mass, you're going to experience gravity. But the good news is, if you really do want to levitate, you have options. For example, there are personal hovercraft. They look like a jet ski that had a baby with a lawnmower, and they're about as low-tech as both of them. They work by lifting the vehicle over a cushion of air, created by a gasoline-powered fan, which lets you glide around a few inches above the ground, so long as you don't go over sand or water. They don't look very cool, and they only go about 25 kilometers per hour, and if you want one, it'll run you about 15,000 US dollars. What they do have going for them is that they exist. If you want something a little higher tech, might I suggest magnetic levitation. That technology exists already. In fact, the fastest trains in the world use it, with magnets under the train floating inches above electromagnetic coils along the tracks. Because they never touch the ground once they start moving, these kinds of vehicles aren't slowed down by friction. Air resistance is their biggest source of drag. The high-speed Shanghai maglev moves at 435 kilometers per hour, and the new maglev bullet train developed for Japan will operate at 500 kilometers per hour. Of course, for this technology to work on a Marty McFly scale, a personal magnetic vehicle would only work on some special infrastructure, like a system of magnetic rails or ground panels. This would be a lot more limiting, and it also doesn't exist. So, okay, you want to really levitate. No magnets, no special panels. You want to float silently on a craft with no moving parts, and you want to be able to fly over anything you want. Sand, water, a sarlacc pit. Okay, you want an ionocraft. So far, they only exist on the really small scale, like something you could fly around on your desk. But they do work. They lift themselves by ionizing the air around them and creating a powerful flow of that ionized air from positive electrodes on the top of the craft to negative ones on the bottom. Since the 1920s, when it was first discovered, this kind of airflow has been known rather enchantingly as ionic wind. The fun begins at the top of the ionocraft, where lots of sharp, spiky electrodes are charged with massive amounts of electricity. Thanks to something called the Biefeld-Brown effect, air ionizes when it encounters electrified sharp edges. So these electrodes quickly start tearing electrons off all the nearby molecules in the air. This creates a cloud of positively charged ions, which are immediately drawn down to the powerful negative electrode at the bottom of the craft. As the ions rush along the sides of the craft, those ions collide with all of the neutral air molecules around it, pushing them down. And at the same time, that stampede of ions creates a vacuum on top of the ion on a craft. So with a vacuum on top and a strong push below, you get lift and the craft silently floats into the air. There's a name for it. It's called electrohydrodynamic thrust, and it's more efficient than a jet engine. While a jet produces two newtons of thrust for every kilowatt of electricity, ionocraft produce 110 newtons of thrust per kilowatt. Jets, it turns out, waste a lot of kinetic energy, but ionocraft waste almost nothing. So what's the problem? energy. Ionocraft need lots and lots of electricity to operate. It takes about one watt of electricity to lift one gram of weight, so creating even a small craft using electrohydrodynamic thrust would require megavolts to operate. That's millions of volts. To give you a sense of perspective, the batteries on most electric cars provide somewhere between 300 to 400 volts. So maybe the reason the Hovertech hoax was so tempting is because it's a technology we all want so bad. And there are technologies that are working toward that eventual goal. Maybe by the time the internet comes up with an automatic hoax debunking app, we'll all have our hoverboards. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow News, especially to our Subbable subscribers. Would you like your very own customized SciShow lab coat, or how about sponsoring one of our graphics? To find out about these and other swell perks, go to subbable.com slash scishow. And if you have a question or comment for us, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, and in the comments below. And if you want to keep getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe. <laughs>